I'm kind of bored of the normal wedding stuff, so today I'm mixing things up. Hey, hey, blushing brides! Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome! My name is Kyle James. In today's video, I'm going to share with you nine new wedding ideas that you haven't heard of before. And even if you don't love any of the specific ideas that I share in this video, I hope that it inspires you to think outside the box and create some fun new traditions and experiences in your wedding that just make it more fun, more meaningful, and more magical. So without further ado, here are some fun new ideas to help you mix things up. Number one is no bridal party. I have actually seen this a lot lately. I've seen it in a couple of my friends' weddings. A lot of people are opting out of the like MySpace top eight bridal party situation um, for one reason or another. Maybe they have way too many friends and they don't want to narrow it down or maybe they just don't really want people standing up there with them at the ceremony or there's just so many things. Um, but whatever the reason is, not having a bridal party can actually be really awesome because then that way you can invite the appropriate people So for Paris's wedding, she had on a Thursday night, they had their like actual ceremony and reception. And this was like a tented event at the at their estate, but it was like more a more intimate guest list. I mean, intimate to them is like 250 people, but <laughs> um, you could do, so you could do your ceremony and reception first and just have it be super intimate and have it be family and friends. And then the next night, the Friday night, they did like this whole carnival at the Santa Monica Pier. But people with normal budgets could do some other kind of theme party or some activity that you and your partner love doing. But some sort of theme party would be really, really fun. And then the last night they had another like bigger reception dinner. There was a black tie reception dinner and I think they still did like dancing and everything that night too but that was a lot less intimate it was like where they just kind of invited everyone that they would have wanted to include so their actual ceremony and reception was pretty intimate and then they had a bigger one later so if you are doing a multi-day event where you have different events you can have different vibes at each thing and then you can also just pick and choose which people you want at which event so I love destination weddings. De destination weddings are definitely my favorite events that I've been to and it's because you get to spend so much time together. It's not just like a rushed couple hour event on one day. 
um, there's multiple events throughout the days leading up to the wedding or maybe the wedding's at the beginning and then there's multiple days after but there's multiple events so you get to like hang out with different people you get to hang out with all of your friends and you really get to soak in celebrating the couple and you actually get some time with the couple um, it's really hard to get some quality time with people if you're all of the wedding is one event um, because it just is really rushed and you're trying to take photos and you're, there's so many people you have to talk to you really don't get the opportunity to spend quality time with specific people this might not be an option for everyone obviously it's going to be more expensive to have more events but even if you can do a like maybe a brunch the day after or kind of split things up i feel like it's time better spent you just really get to soak in the celebration a lot more my next new wedding idea kind of goes along with the other one but it's a little bit different and it's to have a private ceremony and then you can have a shared ceremony and reception so your wedding day is going to be extremely emotional and overwhelming and a lot of people have extreme stage fright they even if they don't feel it until right before they walk down the aisle i've seen almost every bride i work with like really get stage fright when they're walking down the aisle and a lot of them don't even remember the wedding ceremony because they were just so nervous about being up there in front of people so if you're only having one ceremony and that is the one time that you're like marrying your partner and that's the one thing that you have you might want to remember it the best possible way to do this is to do like a first look and then have a private ceremony with private vows just between you and your partner and then have your photographer and maybe your videographer there it's just so much more intimate and you can just actually truly be present with your partner and focus on the promises that you're making to each other and it just is so sweet another way to do this obviously is to elope and have a private ceremony completely separately from the shared ceremony and the reception i like the idea of still having a shared ceremony if you do want to involve more family and friends you don't necessarily need to invite everyone you can still have it be an intimate ceremony and then invite everyone to the reception if you wanted to um to have like a bigger party but I suggest having the private ceremony that's just you and your partner because it's just different than if you're in front of other people. And then you can have another ceremony, whether that's in front of everyone or just family and close friends. And that one you can do the traditional wedding vows where you're like repeating after and doing the rings and everything. That's the fun part for everyone else to watch too. That's what people are there for. So you still like are sharing the wedding ceremony experience with your guests and with your family and with your friends. But it's just, you're not doing the whole thing together. You have that super private, super intimate ceremony with your partner where you are like truly joining together and you can really focus on that. My next new wedding idea is to do a pre-wedding photo shoot. Yes, this is gonna take more time and be more expensive, but I think it can be really cool to do like a themed photo shoot you can do it before or after the wedding, but to do like a themed photo shoot that really speaks to your personalities when you're wearing your wedding dress and everything. I've seen some really cute ideas online of couples who did this, and I think that on your wedding day, you can get great pictures and like the emotions are there and everything, obviously, but you just don't have like the time and the energy really to for it to be like a full photo shoot. I actually found in my research that it's a korean tradition to do these pre-wedding photo shoots so they have a lot of really great ideas um this couple decided to do one at universal studios and so they she actually is like wearing her dress and she brought a bouquet and everything and they just did these stunning photos all throughout universal studios and so that's something unless you like got had your wedding there you wouldn't be able to get that kind those kind of photos and then I love like, just you can really take your time because that's all you're doing that day. It's not like you're getting married and then you have your cocktail, everyone's at cocktail hour. You can really just put the time and effort into the photos. And if you wanna take a closer look at any of these, I will definitely link them below. And then they also did a little like setup later that night. And I'm pretty sure this is probably still at Universal Studios. Um, and they just had like a little backdrop and some little props where they did some photos in front of as well. 
So if you were on more of a budget, this is something you could set up like at a local park or somewhere beautiful um, and just set up a little, a little set for you to take photos on with your groom. And then another idea for a pre-wedding photo shoot would be something like more adventurous. If you wanted to do something like this, you might want to do it after the wedding so you're not worried about getting your dress dirty before the wedding. Or you could also just get a different dress and just wear a different white dress if you wanted to. Um, but I like the idea of actually using your wedding dress. You're only using it once and if it gets a little dirty it's probably fine. But this couple did a really stunning photo shoot like out in the mountains and it was just so pretty and like you probably wouldn't have your wedding out here so it would be hard to get these anyway um and also the time of day too you can get really pick the best time of day for the best lighting for the look that you're going for if you're doing your photos separately than the wedding day because the wedding day you're just kind of limited to shooting when you have time in between the ceremony and reception or if you do a first look you might be able to do it a little bit earlier but just having an entire day where you could just like get these kind of photos is just like such a cool experience it might be kind of cool too if you could get this done early enough like a week or two before then you could print some off and actually have them as decor at your reception too. So I'll link this one below if you're interested in that as well. And then one other pre-wedding photo shoot, well, this one you would definitely do post-wedding. <laughs> A post-wedding photo shoot idea, trash the dress. Oh my gosh, these are so cool and such stunning photos. I recommend finding a photographer who specializes in this because it's kind of like a one and done kind of thing because once the dress is trashed, then it's already trashed. So they know how to like, the stages of trashing the dress that you want to go so that they can get the right photos. Um, so this photographer is actually in Maui. And I'll link all of this below if you want to check it out. But look how fun all of these photos are. Like you can like go hiking in your dress and like you have like the muddy feet with the muddy dress. And oh, it's just so cool. So I think taking this time to do the extra photo shoot can be really cool and can be some really fun pictures for you to share and for you to hang in your new home together. My next new wedding idea is to skip the favors. I know wedding favors are your like token of thank you to your guests and it feels like you really have to do them. It feels like you're supposed to do them. But like I said at the beginning of this video, there is nothing that you have to do. This is your wedding, this is your party. And honestly, most wedding favors just end up in the trash anyway. Most of the time, people don't really keep them around unless it's like your parents or something. Feel free to totally skip the favors. A cool idea to do in lieu of favors is to donate to charities of the guest's choice in honor of the guest or in the guest's name. So taking that money that you would have spent on a favor that they're not going to use and just giving it to a charity that they choose can be just really, really cool and much more meaningful. Another idea in lieu of favors is to personally hand write a letter to each of your guests or each of the guest families that you give and you can put it on their place setting if you have assigned seats or you could have it like in little envelopes on the actual favor table in lieu of the favors. But having like a full heartfelt letter thanking them for being there is gonna be much more meaningful than something that they're not gonna use. My next idea, I'm super excited about this one. I haven't seen it done before, but I'm going to recommend it to every single person I know who is getting married because I think it's so, so cool and it's a ring warming ceremony. So what happens is the rings get passed through all of your guests during your ceremony and each guest holds the rings in their hands and warms them and sends all of their love and well wishes to you as a couple and then they pass them along. I think this is so beautiful, so cool, such a like meaningful, I get like chills even just talking about it. It's just 
such a meaningful experience and it's such a cool way to involve everyone in your ceremony and then once they warm them then you would do the ring ceremony and put them on and they're all full of love and warmth and well wishes it's so cute i love that so much my next new wedding idea is to have a guest book activity at cocktail hour come up with something that your guests can do or make. It's kind of an experience or it's like a fun game for them. I'll go through a few ideas, but the traditional guest book kind of ends up being forgotten a lot of times and doesn't actually get signed or people are just like rushing to sign it before they leave and it's not fully meaningful. So having something that's like cool that your guests made for you or that they worked together to make can be so much more meaningful to both you and them. A few guest activity ideas that you could do are you could get like this little travel journal and have the guests put travel ideas for you. So maybe you could create a sign that says like put your favorite place in the world to travel to or give us an idea for a trip or give us an idea for a restaurant or an experience somewhere in the world like your favorite that you've ever been to. And then your, your guests can kind of just build this whole travel list and list of experiences for you to go through as a couple like throughout your relationship. I think that's a really beautiful idea. I'll link all of this below. These are all from Etsy. I love the idea of asking guests for travel ideas or for adventure ideas. Just make sure that you have a sign that makes it very clear what they're supposed to do or it won't get done. <laughs> and then another idea you could do is like a bucket list. So maybe this is might be a little bit different than a travel list, but probably it would end up with about the same thing. So you could have a bucket list or a travel list. And then another cute idea is to have them put together date night ideas. And I feel like having this at cocktail hour would get people talking. You would get your guests talking to each other if they're like talking about their stories, reminiscing when they're filling it out together. And then it also like really creates connection between your guests. And it's just way more fun than just signing your name in a book. My next new wedding idea is to use decor from your home or from your family's home as your wedding decor instead of renting random things from a rental company. I think this is a beautiful way to add an extremely personal touch on the wedding, especially if you have things like old framed photos, stuff like that. And then just incorporating decor from your home is going to naturally infuse your style into your wedding. A lot of times if you're just using stuff from the rental company, it's stuff the same stuff that everyone else uses and it doesn't necessarily feel super personal or really like tell a story. So you can use some of that, you can totally use some of it, but then also adding in like vases or little things from your travels or just things that are meaningful from your home can make your wedding just so much more personal and special. Also, if you are buying things for your wedding, maybe you're buying vases or frames or something, be sure that it's something that you can reuse in your home. I know my sister did a really cool sign that hung on her head table and they still have it hanging in their house to this day and it's kind of infused with the energy of their wedding. It's just like a cool keepsake from their wedding that actually fits into their home decor. They planned it that way so they can reuse it. It cuts down on waste, it saves money, and it's just so cool to have something beautiful and meaningful from your wedding that you can use in your home for the years to come. A little tip with this one, make sure that you assign someone like the maid of honor or maybe the mother of the bride or something to pick up any of the decor that was actually yours and bring it home with them so that it doesn't get mixed up or lost in with the rental items or with the catering stuff and stuff like that. So make a list of everything that you have in the Unveiled Ultimate Wedding Planning Workbook. I have like a whole decor list. So you could like list out things that are specifically from your house and give that list to somebody who you trust who can pick up all the things at the end of the night so that nothing gets lost in the mix of all of the rentals and everything. And then one more new idea for you. This one is kind of out there, but it just came to me and I thought it would be so fun. It's to give your partner full reign over one of the elements of the wedding. Now this can be something that is important to you or something that's not important to you, but I think it would be so fun, especially if your partner's like goofy or silly or maybe they might surprise you and do something extremely meaningful, but giving them full reign over one of the elements could be just really cool. 
So I recommend giving it to them and then also not asking them about it and having it be a surprise on the big day. Only do this if they're into it. If they're not into it, it might not work that well. <laughs> but it might be cool to have them choose the wedding cake or the wedding dessert or just have them like put together your bridal bouquet or pick out your shoes. I don't know, just some sort of detail where they could really infuse their personality or infuse their love for you and surprise you with something really fun on the wedding day. When I thought of this one, I was like just thinking about all the different grooms that I've worked with and what they would do and it would just be probably hilarious. <laughs> it would be a lot of fun and it would just be meaningful for them. Your partners want to be involved and they like, I feel like it's easy to push them out and be like, no, it has to be this way so that it's pretty for the wedding and pretty for pictures and it has to be perfect. But having something like this would make the element much more memorable and much more meaningful to everyone. So there's a few ideas for you. I wanna hear your new wedding ideas that you're going to incorporate or if you are going to incorporate any of the ones that I shared today. Let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you like this video by giving it a thumbs up or in the comments too. Um, or if you wanna see more videos like this. If you're not already, be sure you hit that subscribe button. I post new wedding videos every single week, so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those. And we'll see you next time. Happy planning. I watch you as you drive. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. I put my feet up